forget exactly how that worked, but I knew we. I knew I was thinking about that. I was like, yeah, how did we do that again? We did the, <laughs> the overlap. That we each did one. But it's yeah, really complex. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? It's too much. You for have me to really to pay attention. It's too much to fathom. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, our Christopher Nolan uh, episode? Oh, dude, I just saw just the. Like that. I saw the Tenet trailer today, the full one for the first time. Mm. Yeah, it uh, was yeah. supposed to come out this month. Yeah, I, think. I don't know. If you've se- have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen one of the trailers. Yeah, yeah I was. It was pretty mind blowing. I must say, I was like, "Holy shit, <laughs> the movie looks insane." <laughs> I'm ex- yeah, I'm excited for it. I like the cast: John David Washington and uh, Robert Pattinson. Uh, yeah, and it's obviously it's Christopher Nolan, so it's going to be a huge like yeah. talking point. Well, and it's like a yeah, it's a cool genre, but it looks like it's Christopher Nol- Nolan, so it looks like it's being like more ambitious than any mm-hmm. anything in the spy genre ever like yeah north for by sure north, north by northwest but like darker even you know, you know yeah. like way darker and crazier yeah and with like a i'm sure it's got like a dark han zimmer score mm-hmm. like oh most yeah Nolan's. totally yeah. yeah yeah and the trailer is uh it's really well cut and it shows like all the the locations that you go to so the movie just feels like huge yeah it just feels grandiose and uh but yet like yeah it gives you the feeling but yet we know nothing about it so it's just like exactly he's like very very cleverly building intrigue about this whole thing yeah i've 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 seen a ton of stuff about it it. Mm -hmm. i feel like on social media like film people are talking about it a lot because it I'm sure it was going to be like the biggest movie of the summer. Yeah. Cuz I'm it, not sure about any like superhero movies that were supposed to come out or anything. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I think it might be like the movie that like reopens movies. Oh yeah. I could see that. I was reading that uh it had like with marketing and everything, it has like a 300 350 million dollar budget. And just to like break even, then you know it needs to make like four hundred or four hundred fifty million, which I feel like it could it's easily rough. do. It's rough now. Exactly. It's hard now. In a in just like a normal normal release, I feel like it easily would have done that. But now, yeah, who knows? It's like a huge budget film. But even if it, it goes into theaters, it's still probably going to be limited capacity. So. Not as many tickets are going to be sold. Yeah. yeah, and and some studios, I feel like they're bu- they're digging such big holes with these projects, and yeah. now they're not going to get the return. I feel like uh, I, th- I I saw an article that's how I came up with this idea, but I, I feel like <laughs> that they um there's there's a chance that a at least a bailout will be pushed for, maybe not happen, but like be pushed for at least. Oh wow, dang. Yeah, maybe not, not a bailout, that, yeah. but government assistance. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Bailout's like pretty Something. strong, but yeah, I yeah I could see that that being like needed, for like the for big sure. f- the big four, you know. Mm-hmm. Even uh, even AMC theaters was saying that like they can't sustain this much longer, and they're you know they might be the biggest theater chain in the country. So yeah, um, I think theaters yeah. are theaters are fucked. Yeah. Hmm. And I think even like Sony, I think it's Sony. There might have been another studio, but they already pushed like all their big releases to 2021. Mm-hmm. I think they were trying to get ahead of all the other studios and just get set dates for next year and not try to bank on anything in 2020 coming out normally. What's yeah. funny is the music box in Chicago is like currently doing a 70 millimeter. Um, 2001 a space odyssey screening really like a limited one and they do this like this is something that happens every year they mm-hmm. do it every year it's probably the most music boxy thing there is and <laughs> yeah i just think it's funny that it's a thing they're doing in the middle of the, in the middle of this like there's definitely people that are gonna go see it but i'm still just kind of like really you need to see 2001 again at the music <laughs> yeah. box that bad like the people that are going are ones that have definitely seen it multiple times. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely going <laughs> to, if I'm going to the movies, I'd prefer it to be like something new and something yeah. that isn't like available 
all the time, which is 2001. Happens to be 2001 in yeah. 70 millimeter at the Music Box because <laughs> <laughs> we we Chicago film people have, have very privileged uh, privileged lives when it comes to that sort of thing. Yeah, dang. I I'm surprised that the Music Box is open. Are yeah. like are any other theaters open? You know what? I I don't know. I, the only reason why I know mm-hmm. this is because the music box posted that they're doing this on their mm-hmm. Instagram account. Um, mm. I don't know anything about AMC or yeah or any of the other theaters around here. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Well, people are gonna start a, a coronavirus spike the music box whenever that <laughs> happens. <laughs> so avoid that area if you're around it. Uh, yeah resist 2001 (laughs) all right well this week i definitely i didn't have a great movie watching week overall i'd say oh no it it was rough for me i i need i need to uh, you know get it back together (laughs) this next week i don't know if you have any uh you and your wife have any fourth plans but <laughs> this weekend but maybe yeah then you can do it this whole weekend yeah exactly we don't have plans except probably grilling out at home and yeah i don't uh, i have zero home. i have zero <laughs> plans as well i'm for, at my parents yeah. house i'm probably going to be watching a lot of movies on the fourth mm-hmm. yeah and i don't think there's going to be any fireworks around here or anything like that so uh yeah it's going to be uh, a good movie watching weekend um i did want to uh i wanted to clear the air on a potential scandal before it got out from <laughs> last week's episode though but what i is couldn't that i couldn't remember if i had seen the shallows or not but i had oh yeah logged it on letterbox and i went back on youtube and i totally re- i remembered i only watched all i needed to do was watch one clip and it was like if I, like sometimes I've done this too, where I forgot about completely forgot about a movie, and I just see like one scene, and I'm like, oh, totally this, and I, it's just mm-hmm. s- skip ahead if you don't want any spoilers. But right. it's when uh, Blake Lively's like shooting the flare at the at the yeah, shark, yeah. and then yeah. coaxes it into impaling itself like on the buoy. Yeah, okay. I totally remember that. So now you remember um, that you've seen it. Yeah, and I did. I did remember enjoying it. Yeah. Okay. I think I was thinking of a different movie in my head, but I, before the fake news media got a hold of that and tried to, uh, you know, slander me, I wanted to. <laughs> I, I just wanted to clear the air. Do you remember the one scene? Now that you remember, do you remember mm-hmm. the one scene where there, like, a drunk uh, Mexican guy kind of rolls up on the beach, near like blacked out, drunk, and she's like calling for help. And oh she sees yes! Her out there, and then he just kind of steals, just starts stealing her stealing shit. everything. Yeah. And then I think I forget what happens next. I think he gets like, I don't know. I think he dies. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I, there's some other guy yeah. that got that got killed, and I, I think it was him, because uh, I, I saw I watched the trailer of it too, and I and I specifically remember yeah, that guy. I just remember that being like the funniest scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like. I remember a lot of hilarious scenes with the shark because it doesn't look terrible, but it also doesn't look great. Yeah, just because it it's a very little, a little CGI. Animated. Yeah. yeah, so it kind of takes you out of it a bit, and I, it, yeah, it's it kind of takes away some of the tension because you realize, oh, it's just a cartoon shark. Yeah. 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 I, I all right. I I have a good transition movie for the shallows. Oh, let's let's hear it to start us off so i this is a movie i've been wanting to see uh for a while because i've heard uh so many good things um including our friend uh our good friend quentin tarantino oh friend of the pod has mentioned multiple times uh (laughs) that this was one of his favorite movies of 2019 uh so i finally saw crawl crawl oh okay i haven't seen that yet yeah, the alligator, the gator action movie. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. Um, because there's a lot of CGI gators. 
what everybody asked for. Yeah. More CGI uh, gators. So for people who don't know what the um, crawl is, it's essentially a um, during a hurricane in Florida, a a swimmer girl named Haley uh, gets trapped um, by a bunch of gators in the basement of her dad's house while trying to save her dad. Um, and as the hurricane builds and the house becomes more underwater, um, her and her dad just become more trapped by more and more alligators, and Haley is forced to essentially fight them off uh, for survival. Uh, and so oh my it's, God. it's really fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and they do not hold back um, a second with the alligator action um, at all. Wow. Um, there's not that much building there. I mean, obviously there's great suspense in that movie, but it's not like jaws where you don't see the shark right away or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like you see like a giant al alligator pretty soon and it is overwhelmingly big. And all of these gators are very big and very scary. Um, and yeah, so are they like supposed to be normal alligators or just like purposely um, like, super big and, and i think crazier. they are in a way inspired off of real alligators and like i think these uh the people behind this are like why aren't real alligators ever seen in this light because they are so <laughs> scary and crazy like i don't think they're like um uh amplifying how uh, alligators and like their look Got at it. least okay. their mm -hmm. look but I do think I don't think alligators are necessarily um, this like hunger driven and this like like um, active in uh, as like predators like I don't know anything about mm -hmm. alligators I don't but I like to the extent that they are attacking and swimming through the water and biting in this movie i don't think it is like like that but i think it's like in this world it's like what if it was like this and alligators mm -hmm. should be seen like in a you know should be used um in a cinematic way like this is yeah. more what yeah um so yeah like you can throw um well, I, I don't think this is like I I don't think this is a dumb movie at all. I would not call this really a unrealistic movie, but I, I would call it um, I would I would say that you're there throwing uh, realism out the window in a way um, mm -hmm. to make something uh, really fun and cool. Um, because yeah, like Haley, Haley's just like fighting these off with like her hands. <laughs> <laughs> like it's pretty crazy. She Badass. gets she gets bit a shit ton by these giant alligators um and it's like really just like they've kind of um build a very uh inspirational narrative out of it for her around it and it's there they and like they kind of force um show a flashback scene at the beginning where her dad was her swim coach as a kid and really pushed her mm. And so there's like a scene where he's like, swim to the boat, do it, you're <laughs> faster than them. <laughs> and then she does it, and it's really, it's really cool and badass. And, uh, so yeah, there's not much more to say about it. It's just uh, overall very good. I thought it, uh, I thought it met, met the hype. Um, I think it's definitely like, I think we talk a lot about the 2019 movies that there were and how there were a lot of great movies. And I, mm -hmm. I, I don't think we talked a lot about like necessarily uh, the fun ones. Um, yeah. Right. I think a mm -hmm. lot of them are very like important more so. Um, so I would say like outside of like knives out um, crawl is like one easily one of the best blockbuster, just fun movies of 2019 nice sweet yeah. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure to watch that one i'm always down for like a monster type movie yeah just like you know something like jaws where uh yeah. oh totally yeah it sounds sounds like something that would be really fun well should we stick with that same uh same theme and uh talk about the abyss oh yeah Since, yeah, uh, yeah let's stay in the water well, let's, let's, yeah let's let's go even deeper this time yeah, let's get out of the shallow out of the shallows. Yeah, we've been crawling in the shallows. 
So in the shallow lows with Lady Gaga. So now <laughs> the <laughs> now let's go to the abyss with Ed Harris. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What would you think of The Abyss? So, The Abyss. uh, Yeah, clearly James Cameron loves this diving shit. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I've I've seen videos of him, like, you know, doing these dives on his own. Oh, really? Um, Yeah. That's cool. He just loves that. That's that's something he loves why he's made the Titanic and whatever. Um, Everyone's got their quirk, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I liked liked The Abyss. It felt like a good, good... 80, 80s 90s movie uh, where there's just where there's like a crew of people and they're all trying to you know uh, to, to handle this this dire situation that they're in it felt almost like um, alien but underwater yeah it totally too. it totally is it has those same mm-hmm. tropes yeah mm-hmm. and or yeah and aliens uh, definitely aliens. yeah mm-hmm. and there I feel like he has the same like types uh it going on um to in like the crew yes yes totally yeah there's like the uh like the bill paxton type guy exactly from aliens yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and then there's the like person who's totally like fucking them over for the government yeah uh and i think there's probably a some there is a strong female character, of course, but uh, I was trying mm-hmm. to think if there's a strong Latina character because he does like those too. <laughs> James Cameron likes his Latinos. Uh, I'm looking at the names of the on the cast here, and they all seem pretty, uh, pretty white to me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there is a Mary Elizabeth uh, Mastrantonio. She's the main woman in it. Very, very Italian name. Yes, yeah, super very Italian fucking kind of Italian, name, but. Uh yeah, and they even have Chris Elliott is in it too, uh, who I feel like he was like the token like, kind of weird comedic guy to throw mm-hmm. in movies in like the eighties and nineties like this. Uh, but yeah, I liked it. it. It felt like a good popcorn blockbuster movie. Yeah, and yeah, very it's a good James summer Cameron-y. movie. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I think uh, I think the things that I wish I just there were more of were more of like the uh. Uh, the alien life um yeah or more i guess mystery behind what what that was i didn't feel like there was enough of that uh but i still yeah i still really liked it and i didn't know like anything about it really until you uh talked about it on last week's episode so yeah i'm glad i glad i finally got to watch it yeah the alien life isn't really explored a lot Mm-hmm. Uh, but by the end, I was pretty mind blown as like the city rises and it. Ed that Harris, was cool. Yeah. Ed Harris just kind of goes zooming into the city. It's just like this is fucking crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it looks like uh, the Phantom Menace was inspired by the Abyss. Yeah, right. It they... <laughs> totally does. It totally does. Yeah, yeah. No, there's definitely a lot of cool things, and the effects were awesome too. Uh, yeah. I, I definitely would recommend The Abyss to anyone who um, also recently got HBO Max. Yeah, I feel like you can't go wrong because it's, it's just so ambitious that yeah, mm-hmm. either way you're going to feel have an experience no matter how you feel about it necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, The Abyss. Uh, what, should we, uh, what should we go into next? Individual one? Here, I'll do an individual <laughs> yeah, one since yeah, yeah, you, should you do just one. did one. I was, I, I'm I, losing the order in my I was head. just getting confused. I was like, wait, <laughs> you just did one. All right, I'll go with... Uh, all right, we're going to take a hard, hard left turn. And I'll go with a rewatch that I did um, because Carl Reiner passed away oh. this week. Yeah. And it was it was weird because so I like to watch uh, every now and then I just watch comedians in cars getting coffee while I'm working. It's Same like a here. nice thing to have on while working. And the day that Carl Reiner died, like that he died in the evening, and that day I literally watched the Carl Reiner episode of Comedians in Cars getting coffee, and like my mind was blown. I was like, what? I was just watching him, you know, have dinner with Jerry Seinfeld and Mel Brooks, and it was like this awesome thing. 
uh yeah and then he died so it was like it was like even more sad for me then because i had just watched this uh so i rewatched the jerk um which uh might be his the biggest movie that he directed yeah uh most well known um with steve martin and uh yeah uh the jerk i I don't have too much to say about it since it's it's just a rewatch but um, it's one of my, it's one of my dad's favorite movies <laughs> and too. yeah, yeah. I feel like Steve Martin and the jerk is like, that's like peak dad. Yeah. Uh, dads love that, that stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I had to rewatch it and I, you know, texted my dad and everything and, uh, yeah, it was a sad day cause Carl Reiner, uh, and Mel Brooks are some great like comedic minds. And it was, I think it was just Mel Brooks birthday recently too. Um, and yeah, I, the jerk I still think is a a good classic comedy movie. There's some things that don't necessarily just hold really up. Really odd for for like what? <laughs> yeah, there's some of the some of the racial stuff. Uh, like there's no, nothing comes from a bad place, but it doesn't really hold up now. It seems a little, um, seems a little outdated. Which that's yeah. uh, gonna happen because it if came you just out look 79. at the straight premise alone, you're just like, all right, it's it's kind of stupid <laughs> yeah but. exactly it's a yeah it's a very just like silly uh dumb yeah. movie but yeah. uh yeah I, I do i do love this sort of thing um sometimes and yeah i still still really like the jerk and uh yeah it, it was a it was a good rewatch much needed rewatch uh trying not to dwell on the uh the weird um, use of the n-word at <laughs> it's one a, yeah. point yeah. it's a weird movie to watch during this time yeah yeah again not a, it's not out of a bad place you can tell that and yeah yeah and i don't know steve martin's like but, a really yeah a smart a smart guy uh, yeah it, it's they're very progressive people in this movie uh it's just outdated <laughs> but it was 1979 yeah. you know so yeah. we've we've learned um, there's yeah. a there's a great one of my favorite bids in this movie is when uh I think Steve Martin's talking to like his love or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like the first it's, it's a type of style of joke that he does a lot um, where he's like the first day I met you, it felt like it felt like 10 days. (laughs) And then the second day felt like 20 days or so. (laughs) I forget how exact I'm butchering it, but it's like, you know, and then he just keeps going the fourth day. (laughs) <laughs> it was like 40 days because <laughs> yeah. he's just a plain idiot yeah, yeah too that yeah which is the biggest like uh you know comedic part of the movie is just how stupid he is yeah, yeah. and there's and he does like the same joke when he when steve martin accepts the mark twain prize it's like he's like oh if really I ma- if i made you laugh one time i am happy if i made you laugh two times i am ecstatic <laughs> if i made you laugh three times i'm overwhelmed it's like yeah, a joke he does a lot that i'm just like that's that's pretty great <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah pretty good bread and butter yeah it, it's got some good quotes in it and everything i know uh, my every now and then my dad will pull out the this guy hates cans he hates <laughs> cans he's shooting the can yeah uh you know if there's ever a can around uh you can make that joke but uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's uh yeah, that's, that's like a michael jerk. scott line that's that joke is good if you're ever have a can around if you ever have a can around yeah yeah all right all right um, the jerk the jerk okay so i guess now i can do one of my uh ones of yours that i watched right i guess yes is that yes you can doing? is that the order we're <laughs> that is indeed the order okay and you will follow that order mm, all right then i just watched uh just now <laughs> the naked kiss oh uh, all right the sam fuller flick um yeah we're both on a bit of a a sam fuller run right now I for sure yeah we both just watched two yeah crimson kimono and uh now the naked kiss uh yeah and now i really want to watch uh every sam fuller movie yeah i want to watch more really liked both of them yeah Yeah, the naked kiss was yeah both of these movies were like uh just very perfect yeah yeah and i i I just really i love that when you just stumble on you don't really know 100 percent about what you're getting into but you just stumble on just like 
uh, very uh, just special movies. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and that the Naked Kiss, it just like everything about it just like hit for me just worked very Mm -hmm. well um yeah from the the very beginning i was just like this movie is so cool and then like i got emotionally invested and uh yeah it's such a simple story at its core but yet it's like done so well and is so uh um it's yeah it's just done so well it's so cool it's so emotionally investing that um yeah just loved it yeah and it's i went in just kind of expecting what you'd normally expect from uh noir and uh yeah it it, it definitely wasn't like that at all it, i yeah. was really emotionally invested too and uh cared about the characters and was genuinely like shocked when certain things happened and uh yeah 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 it's one i can't i can't think of many negatives about it because i just uh, yeah i it was one of those that after it's it's over, it's like, wow, I, I really love that. I would watch that like again and again. Oh, I would watch that again for sure. And mm-hmm. I think seeing the, the Crimson Kimono before kind of like informed um, me on what I was going to see and uh, mm-hmm. what to be ready for. And so I think it just helped enhance uh, this watch for me. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I would, yeah, I, I'm with you. I would watch this movie again and, um, in a heartbeat uh for sure and definitely uh it's on my radar is just like i build that like uh that eventual like classic movies list um uh, yeah where did you watch this did you oh so you watched this movie on hbo max I you must think. have right yeah yeah hbo max. so i at first yeah. i tried amazon at first because it's on there because i was like oh he mm-hmm. must have watched it on amazon um and then i started it and i don't know if you've ever noticed this but a lot of the classic movies on amazon oh just yeah look like total shit they do i've um, seen um i've seen other like youtube videos of people talking about um trying to watch movies on amazon prime and they couldn't because yeah. it looks so bad yeah the naked it, uh, kiss, the same like, i i started it's like the first scene where she's just beating up that guy yeah and <laughs> there wasn't even like an intro like a studio title or anything on amazon it just like went into it so i'm like what is this like it's just starting like this and and it just looks so bad Um, wow and i was just like fuck i gotta switch i so i switched immediately (laughs) to uh criterion channel because i was Mm -hmm. like criterion must have it this is totally a movie they would have and yeah um yeah, just like as I opened up Criterion and I looked at like the the cover of it, I'm like, I just know, all right, this is the right move. And I started, I'm like, okay, yes, perfect. This is, looks breathtaking now. This is an amazing yeah. looking movie. And especially since um, there's a lot of uh, close-ups in this movie that are like used for emphasis and uh, big scenes and big moments. And the close-ups are so good that like, yeah, if I kept watching on Amazon, it would have just ruined this fucking movie. Totally, for me, like completely. Yeah. Like it, it, it looked so bad. Um, yeah, yeah well, I'm glad you switched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, because I was gonna say it. It's a movie that looks amazing too. It does. So it, it looks fantastic. Take so much away from it. Uh, but yeah, it looks great on HBO Max. Uh, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it did. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah that opening scene too it's uh yeah it really sets it up perfectly mm -hmm. um yeah and then there's like a line in the jail cell where she's like i would never let you throw uh throw ten dollar bills in my mouth uh (laughs) uh, yeah yeah it all just connects very well and um as she leaves the town it's also just that's like that gets very emotional as well um yeah just very sad yeah and and i would say too that both these sam fuller movies that we've watched are like pretty progressive uh, oh, yeah. for their times totally. too they're the ones that like they probably at the time weren't super popular but they've aged mm-hmm. super well yeah uh yeah yeah like, no they've like, definitely aged well yeah I, I even felt like the naked kiss was was like a modern movie it didn't feel whatsoever dated at all um yeah there's even there's plenty of movies from the 60s that 
just you know they they just feel like old movies uh but yeah this one didn't yeah um okay i'll do a a rewatch a rewatch i did over the weekend uh on paul thomas anderson's birthday i decided to rewatch inherent vice um i was gonna watch rewatch the master but then i was like that is so emotional and intense (laughs) (laughs) you gotta be ready for that yeah yeah i was just like nah i don't know if that's a good uh covid movie yeah i i think on a a certain day it was it's just like i was not in the mood Mm -hmm. uh for that and a lot of his movies are like really just um really sad (laughs) they're really (laughs) very sad movies so i didn't want to watch one of those (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> just like on that specific day so i decided to rewatch inherent vice because in uh inherent vice is definitely one of the lesser sad ones and it's, it's one of the more i found to be one of the more actually just one of the more rewatchable ones like i've seen it probably now like eight or nine times and uh the more i rewatch inherent vice the more um, the more I'm just like amazed at how unique and, um, and good this film is. Um, and there's just something about this world that, um, I find it like addicting, uh, to be in. Um, like I've also mm-hmm. read the book a couple of times oh, really? and I have found this, yeah, I've just found this movie to be endlessly fascinating and mysterious and have so much line within and, um, uh, I still think I could rewatch it another 10 times, honestly, and be still <laughs> intrigued. And, um, uh, and so, yeah. And especially since I was looking for like a more, uh, chill vibe, uh, inherent vice was perfect for That's that. That's exactly it. Yeah. And I was looking for more of a good mood, good feel movie. And, um, I've seen boogie nights, a ton <laughs> I've, I've probably watched it already a couple times this year so i went with inherent vice nice uh, inherent vice is one that uh i feel like requires multiple viewings um oh totally and, yeah so i'm i'm entire need of that because i've just seen it the one time but uh yeah just to i mean take in everything that's really oh, like, yeah, going yeah. on because it's yeah. it, it you st- it always starts off for me where i'm like oh my god this movie's crazy it's amazing i love it and then it just <laughs> like it goes on it just keeps going yeah. on with like he just keeps joaquin phoenix just keeps meeting more and more people like mm-hmm. more and the cast just keeps growing bigger and the dialogue that you are unable to follow just keeps going and you're just like where the fuck am i at, at this point and so it, it takes a while to be able uh to piece all that together yeah yeah definitely so it's why i've watched it now like eight or nine times <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think if you uh i mean i really liked it although i couldn't fully grasp the entire thing you know yeah but i still really liked it because i i felt very invested in it um you know from the opening the opening sequence right and i think i think that's because i was prepared for it in a way you know i i knew that i wasn't you know supposed to be expecting just a by the books you know regular type of movie right so yeah i think going into it with a completely open mind uh really helps a lot too and yeah i I gotta rewatch that. Yeah, it's a movie I rewatch every summer now. I think it's a really nice. great summer movie. All right, Inherent Vice, and okay. So uh, next, okay, now, I know okay, it's now, coming next now because I now I know how this works. I know now what we movie's got it. coming next. So next <laughs> is a movie that I watched that uh, Luke brought up last week. And it's the Heartbreak Kid. Yeah. And yeah. I, I specifically made a point to say <laughs> that you should watch this movie. Yeah, I got a memo on my <laughs> desk Monday morning to yeah. change so my plans. So I don't plans. know how that factored into how you felt about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Where well, you know, like, wow, he really wanted me to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you first said that, I was like, oh, that's good. It's probably 
Uh, it's probably a lot shorter than uh, the Orson Welles movie. Uh, it's it's way easier to watch. I will say, yeah, that. it's like less effort uh, for you. Definitely. definitely, yeah, yeah. But I was I was initially thinking like, oh yeah, it's probably like you know ninety minutes, so it's probably a lot shorter than the Orson Welles movie. And then I looked at it, and I was like, whoa, this is over over two hours almost. Oh, it's about two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I think about it, it is. And I was and I was like, whoa, for a rom com, that feels like an epic. Yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, but I, it was definitely much easier to watch than yeah. I assume that Orson Welles' movie Chimes at Midnight would have been. Yeah. Uh, and I, w- I was definitely curious to see this because this is one I, you know, back in 2006 or seven probably saw 100 trailers for it uh, before every movie and on TV. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I watched it, but... Uh, yeah, I definitely won't be won't be watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking weird one. Yeah, but you're right. Like it starts out right away, right from the get go. It's Jerry Stiller berating Ben Stiller about how much of a pussy he is and how much yeah. he can't get women. <laughs> yeah, why aren't you a misogynist, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why don't you? You're just, only you know... focused on your sporting goods store. <laughs> you're only focused on your career. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he's like, why don't why aren't you just having one night stands every night like I am? This you know seventy year old man. Right. There's uh, not even a mention <laughs> on what happened to the mom. <laughs> yeah, nothing at all. He's just a single dad. There was no mom in the picture. He, right. Yeah, he's just a yeah this swinging seventy year old who just <laughs> gets laid every swinging, night. Swinging, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like it's right at the beginning. That's you know that's how it starts. It's not like. Uh, you know, oh yeah, it's you know this nice this nice guy and this nice girl in this American city. Yeah. Um, just stumble into each other's lives. It's uh yeah. Um, and I I found it super odd just how quickly you know they decided to just get married when uh when you know clearly Ben Stiller is this guy that's afraid of you know commitment and you know taking himself away from his job. But then all of a sudden this one girl comes by and. He's like, yeah, okay, fuck it, let's just get married. Yeah, yeah. Which and, I, uh, I like see, I like see that like whole premise to a degree. I, I so I do find that part kind of funny. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, like people like being desperate and rushing and in, into marriages because true, they've been yeah. alone. They've been alone for a while. That sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that like specific premise is handled well. But they like they I, there's a I don't know there's other things about it that are just like so goofy and ridiculous like especially malin ackerman's whole performance god is yeah. so um i think it's funny but at the same time i'm also like this is just not a real human being it's exactly like, like what the fuck is this you know there were there were points i thought were funny for sure yeah. but then it got yeah it got to a point where um it, yeah, if this person existed, they yeah. for sure would be in a straitjacket in a mental institution. You yeah, know, she doesn't I already. feel like a real person, and Ben Stiller just kind of comes off like a dick to, for being like me, you know, doing her like this because she, she's definitely not like unlikable. She just doesn't feel authentic or, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, she does nice things for him. Really, she's just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's also just also completely insane. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. there's all the uh, there's all these signs on it of it like immediately, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, on the car ride, and then they have like sex for the first time. And it's just the weirdest thing ever. She's yeah, she's like making him do she's all just this like crazy fr- shit. She's just and... like a crazy freak. Yeah, and the, she showed no signs of that at all, you know, before before they were married. Uh, yeah, and I don't know. I felt like uh, while it was two hours, I did at point at a point feel like it was three hours like yeah i yeah. felt like it it was never gonna gonna end even though it <laughs> it kind of it, it told you exactly where it was going you know yeah. once once yeah. uh michelle monahan's character gets introduced uh but yeah I, i'm still glad i watched it because yeah i did i did enjoy parts of it i i like yeah. how th- those random twins from this this random wedding in san francisco and then oh yeah the same kids you mean yeah and then somehow hey that guy's gay yeah so it's like i'm not gay i'm (laughs) with that girl (laughs) like oh yeah okay yeah (laughs) Yeah. 
And then they're like, who's hotter, Brad Pitt or George Clooney? And he's like, uh, Brad Pitt. And they're like, yeah, he is gay. And he's like, oh. <laughs> like, I thought I thought you meant career wise. Well, that's why I thought you were talking about career. Yeah, I know. It's so yeah. dumb. It's yeah. It's it's definitely felt like a Fairly Brothers movie. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I love how I Danny know. McBride is like just there, and he's always just <laughs> yeah. a dick. He's a dick to him for no reason at all. Yeah. He's like this he's overly like, protective. He's like, what are what? you doing here? Why are you hanging out with our family? Yeah. I didn't like and, how m- my sister here or whatever, like, broke up with her boyfriend, who was my friend recently, so I don't <laughs> trust anybody. And then the rest of the family thinks he's, like, this amazing guy. Yeah, and they're all, though they're all, like, complete idiots, too. Yeah, it's just such an off the walls thing. I, I, yeah. I, I defer with you. I would actually, like, if someone like wanted to watch this i would probably watch it with them just so i could be like oh hair look at this shit (laughs) you know know what i mean um yeah i definitely think this movie's very bad but i don't know weirdly like i i enjoyed it yeah see i think i i don't think i could do i don't think i could do it again but there was (laughs) but i still i still left it glad that i that i went through the two hours and saw it yeah, it's and, just uh, kind of one of those for me where I'm just like, I can't believe they like even did this. So I'm like, I get a kick out of that. Yeah, like the yeah. amount of times there's a mariachi band and like Ben Stiller's like, get out of here! No, <laughs> no, we don't. We're done. No, get yeah. out of here. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, I just can't believe it. Yeah, and then the ending too is so ridiculous. Where he, uh, uh, again, skip ahead if you don't want to hear spoilers about the heartbreak kid. But then he's like with Eva Longoria, and uh, and then Michelle Monaghan like reconnects with him, and he's now he's got to like get out of this relationship. He does, yeah. Too. It happens again, so <laughs> it really just like when that happens, I'm like, okay, so all of this I shouldn't have taken. It, it really does put the cap. Really, yeah, no, nothing here is serious or real or anything. nothing matters yeah. nothing matters here but Life is it, meaningless. It, or or you can look at it as like ben stiller's like the biggest fucking dick ever <laughs> yeah know? yeah which yeah which could also be true from from this movie but uh, yeah that yeah that's the heartbreak kid apparently it's also it's like this is a remake of an older movie too is that right oh yeah 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 well, maybe maybe we'll have I to think check that, that one out too. quality wise is supposed to be just way, way better. Gotcha. Must have been if they Not decided all to remake Farrelly it. Not Fairly Brothers, yeah. a little more sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the heartbreak kid. Um, all right, where all do right. we leave off? So it's me now. I think it's you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I got yeah. a good connect connection movie to that. Uh, All right. A, I got another dumb comedy to bust out. Oh, uh, let's do it. It's around and and it's a uh, a two thousands comedy from around the same time, uh, and starring a very well liked, well known star. It is uh, Drillbit Taylor mm. with Owen Wilson. Um, this is one I also. I've wanted to watch this for a while. Not like super bad. Like I want, you know what I mean? Like, but it was yeah. always one where I saw and I'm like, you know, I'd feel very fulfilled if I saw that movie, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would be just this much more fulfilled if I watched that. Yeah. I thought we all have about Drillbit Taylor. Yeah. Um, mm. So a weird, weird uh, info about this movie Uh this movie was written by Seth Rogen. Um, and the story was written by John Hughes. Um, what the? There were other writers on this, but they are part both part of the writing team. You know, the, all the credits. Wow. That's, that's wild. Yeah. John yeah. Hughes and Seth Rogen. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I'm, I'm like speechless. I don't even know. I don't know how and to ingest so that information. I will, I will follow that up by saying that uh, it does not show in the movie <laughs> because this movie is not very good. Uh, this movie's ve- mm. and, and it's not like what I, it's not like what I was saying about the Heartbreak Kid, where I said I would watch this again and I kind of enjoyed the ridiculousness of, is of it. I kind of found this movie to be just 
a, a drag uh, for mm. a majority of it. Um, it kind of like reminded, like made me think of like what Good Boys is probably like, um, because the story revolves around mainly three high school kids who are getting bullied um, by Josh Peck and this other tough dude. Josh Peck? Yeah, Josh Peck is one of the bullies. Holy shit. Um and yeah, Josh Peck is not I don't I did not like him a lot in this either. I just th- kind of thought he was um th- like this is not does not have to do with the overall product. Product. But since we're on Josh mm-hmm. Peck, uh I just thought yeah, I just thought he was both the bullies in general were both just like always assholes and looked like they were getting off on bullying and that's it and they were very one-dimensional and boring and they didn't try to like they didn't even try to write jokes in there like to make fun of the bullies in any way Mm -hmm. uh so that part of, of it sucked and yeah and and back to like good boys um i don't know if you ever saw good boys yeah i did oh you did so yeah one of the yep. reasons why i like i didn't I, I haven't wanted to see good boys is like drill bit taylor is kind of is what i saw in drill bit taylor it's kind of just a bunch of uh kind of below below average dialogue between these child actors who are writing things that seth rogan and his buddy are writing and Mm -hmm. um it's you know like heist it's like somewhat super bad level age humor like they're swearing and they're talking they're obsessed with women you know like yeah you know women's naked body parts and shit and but they're like kids they're very young (laughs) yeah they feel genuinely very young and um i don't know just can't get yeah. into can't get into them uh hmm. i i don't think they're yeah i don't think they warrant necessarily a story built around them i don't think they have what it, the chops to be as funny or as interesting as they're supposed to be uh in this movie just yeah because they're these kid actors that are just kind of not bad but just kind of okay um mm-hmm. also one of the kids is very he's one of the fat kid with a uh jufro he kind of has this like uh, Biggie Smalls lingo to him. <laughs> um, it's really strange. It's almost like he's trying to talk like he's a rapper a lot of the times, and then he has a rap battle with one of the bullies, and he like legit sounds like he's trying to rap like Big Biggie Smalls. And I'm kind of like, I feel like they wrote this kid to be like a little white Jew, Jewy Biggie Smalls. Wow. So that that that's, part's really that's weird. weird. <laughs> it is weird. And now I'm realizing I haven't even really gotten to the premise of this movie, um, which is <laughs> basically these kids who are getting bullied by Josh Peck and this other guy uh, hire uh, Owen Wilson, who is Drillbit Taylor, a a beach bum. <laughs> Literally, yeah, he's that's what he is. He's a beach bum uh, to protect him. And also, Owen Wilson is a uh, former army vet. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was and, gonna say like, why would they just pick this random beach bum guy? So that and that's why he wears like this uniform. Yeah, like in the yeah. poster. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he actually has no real, uh, like, just combat skills, like at mm-hmm. all. He's just kind of like a pacifist who happened to be in the army and he just kind of deceives these kids the whole time. And it's just kind of a silly deception where he's like, I'm going to show you guys how to defend yourselves. And then they get beat up by the bullies and they're like, where were you drill bit? And he's like, all right, I won't miss it this time. And then he's like (laughs) over, you know, like banging Leslie Mann in another room. And then he's like, Oh no, I gotta go protect the kids. Where are they? And then he goes to find the kids and, um it's just like really stupid um and then he he ends up stealing um like he get one of his buddies is danny mcbride of course and and danny mcbride he gets um 
he gets Danny McBride and one of his other buddies to steal a bunch of stuff from like their parents' house while they're away. Uh, so he's just really fucking these kids over this whole time. Um, but then at the end, there's this whole thing where, you know, he's like, oh, I really liked these kids all around, all along, and we should be friends, and ends up being that sort of thing. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to watch Drillbit Taylor, um, at all. <laughs> but have you, have you seen Good Boys? Uh, no, I did not. Oh, okay. I, I feel like you would like that a lot more than Drillbit Taylor. I feel like it's for sure better than Drillbit Taylor. Yeah. So, so the thing with Good Boys was that, um, I definitely, I thought it was, I thought it was still charming and... Uh, there, there were definitely some funny moments. A lot of it just felt like, uh, I don't know, recycled humor and they were trying to, I mean, they're clearly trying to market it as like a middle school version of super bad. Cause I think they're all like in sixth grade. Um, and yeah, like the kids are likable, uh, all three of them in it, I think. But the, yeah, it's just, the writing is just very much like recycled jokes from 10 years ago that um you know everybody everybody knows everybody it was kind of like anticipating every joke coming i felt like so yeah um it's like yeah. these but kids are gonna do something you know inappropriate the, they're gonna find one of their parents dildos and they're yeah, gonna be like, yeah what yeah. is this thing yeah I that know. that sort of like that sort of thing you know people in the theaters lost their minds over <laughs> yeah it was I hilarious know. they <laughs> but, lose their fucking minds over that yeah, but then there was, I don't, but I still like the kids, you know. I still think it's uh, it would, it's probably a better, much better movie than Drillbit Taylor. But uh, yeah, but I liked more of the times when they're like, you know, someone, uh, some girl calls them random. She's like, "You're so random," and then that like ruins their day. They're like, "Oh my god, she called us random," and I just, <laughs> I like, I thought That's that sort of line. thing was funny because it's like the, like this very innocent, uh, you know, aspect of these middle school kids who totally like. You know, if an adult called called me random, I'd be like, okay. But then, you know, if you're in a, like in middle school and someone calls you like something like that, that uh, you know hurts your feelings, and you could mm-hmm. clearly see that with these innocent little kids. So, uh, yeah, there's there's my plug for uh, for good boys. But uh, yeah, definitely along the same lines with the uh, <laughs> Trillbit Taylor. <laughs> yeah, with Trillbit Taylor. Wow. Yeah, another one I can remember seeing like a thousand trailers for back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. And never we know seen, what all but... these movies are like in our subconscious almost. Yeah, another one of those movies from from around this time. Uh, all right. Okay then, uh, what's next? Is it uh, the other crossover we have? Did you do both of yours? Yeah, I did both mine, The Abyss and Heartbreak Kid. Yeah, yeah, we just did the Heartbreak All right, so I need to go. Um, yep. All right, so I watched uh, um, River's, River's Edge. Edge. Yeah. yeah. Forgot until just now. Right, yeah, with yeah. Uh, Crispin Glover, Keanu Reeves, uh, Dennis Hopper. Uh, yeah, this was uh, once you uh, talked about it last week, I was very intrigued. Uh, by this movie um, mm-hmm. mainly just the because of uh, the premise and the cast I was like yeah and the tone you described I was like all right that sounds like my kind of thing and uh, yeah it was it was really good I did I did just it, it felt like in a way a, mo- a type of movie I've like watched before but also uh, mm-hmm. not completely because uh, I I do watch a lot of weird shit. <laughs> and this is pretty this is a pretty uh unique film yeah um especially uh dennis hopper and crispin glover are very yeah, that... unique uh characters crispin glover especially how he uh drives everything forward and you kind of see the situation through his uh paranoid uh paranoid uh character characterization is it was big and uh Mm -hmm. yeah crispin glover is just continues to be one of the most uh unique actors i've ever known so weird yeah Yeah. right yeah Um, he's very weird in this yeah yeah and i think for dennis hopper he was 
mildly weird for for Dennis Hopper, even though <laughs> yeah. he was very fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his girlfriend is a sex doll. Yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I do. Um, I did really like in the end where this one. I, I yeah, I, I definitely don't want to get spoilery if anyone has. It, it, it does. Yeah, the, it all comes together very yeah. nicely in the end. And in, in the end, when you find out more about Dennis Hopper's character, uh, I really liked um, how they did that. Uh, yeah, and it, and it it felt, yeah, like you said, it felt um, familiar in ways, like it felt like a familiar '80s movie, but uh, there's definitely, um, definitely a lot of uniqueness to it. Yeah, and, like I thought it was gonna yeah. be a lot more like intense and have mm-hmm. a lot more drama, but it had a very, a lot more of a laid back high school um, demeanor about the situation, and it was still a lot about. Um, these high school kids like trying to find themselves during this yeah. and um, yeah. that maybe made the movie more interesting and possibly now that I'm rethinking it even darker <laughs> in mm-hmm. a way uh, so yeah I thought that was really cool yeah I think that was great how um, how it gave that feeling because it's a lot about you know the you know passiveness of how these teenagers feel you know feel about their friend getting murdered mm-hmm. and just i don't know i yeah. feel like it says a lot about youth yeah in America like that te- and... that teacher at the end and yeah and the rant he goes on mm-hmm. and yeah and so i feel like the how the the movie doesn't you know it doesn't go super into the girl who's murdered into like her backstory and like and talk about what a great person she was or you, you know you don't even see her alive yeah because it's not you know it's not necessarily about that it's about how it's about how these kids react to that sort of situation um yeah yeah i really liked river's edge feel like it's uh it's very profound but also like a classic 80s high school movie yeah it's also like really accessible um Mm, yeah like more more accessible uh than the other movies that I'd compare it to. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. Uh, okay, River's Edge. I guess I'll move on to. Uh, I got. I got two more. Not sure about you. I, I do too. Two more individuals. Perfect. Um. So, I would say I didn't have a great week, movie watching wise, because I just I felt like, uh, the random movies that I watched on my own were just pretty medi- mediocre. And these last two are two of them, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. Strap in, everybody. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to watch them because they're like weird indie comedy movies that piqued my interest because of who's in them. Uh, and the first one I'll talk about uh, is one I saw on Hulu, and it's called "When Jeff Tried to Save the World." Yeah, um, I saw that. Not see it, but I saw that you watched it. Hmm. It's uh, it's directed by Kendall Goldberg, who I uh, don't think she's done. This is her first feature film, um, and she made a short film um, called the same exact thing about the same exact thing. Um, and then, you know, this is the feature length film of that. Um, and it stars John Heater, Napoleon Dynamite himself, um, Jim O'Hare, who plays Jerry in Parks and Rec, um yeah and everyone else is sort of smaller there's also maya erskine who i recognize from other things wine country that's what i recognize her from one of um, uh polar's friends yeah mm-hmm. and uh so yeah so when jeff tried to save the world is about uh this bowling alley manager played by john heater who he finds out that uh you know from the owner that the bowling alley is being sold. You know, they just don't have enough uh, interest oh, in this town. No. <laughs> yeah. The, you hear the old bowling alley shutting down. Yeah. So the weird thing is, though, I, I was kind of confused because John Heater's apartment in this, there's so much Chicago stuff in it. You know, there's a Chicago flag. There's, you know, I feel like the, the skyline of Chicago. There's like a Cubs thing. There's all this Chicago stuff. But then they they the way they portray the town is as if it's like this small middle of nowhere town in the Midwest, um, 
and you know that's that's why like the bowling alley is so important to to john heater but i I was so confused by that yeah i still am i don't know what it was maybe he just loves chicago it's like (laughs) their it's like their way of like trying to make you think it's in chicago but like they don't have the budget so they're shooting in like indiana somewhere i did look it up and it was filmed in lansing so lansing illinois Ah. which is much more rural than Chicago's. Uh, so maybe they were going for just like a Illinois town, but not in Chicago. Yeah, he's John a, he just he's just a loves Chicago, Chicago fan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he just loves everything about the city of Chicago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Diehard Chicago fan. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, it's it's basically about that, That and that's it. And he, he wants to do every... It's called Je- Jeff Tried to Save the World, but... It's all just about him saving the bowling alley. Um, and so while I thought it was a pretty mediocre movie, there were things that I did like about it. Um, and and there's definitely like positive things to take away from it. Uh, I'm going to actually, I want to get over like the bad, the bad things first. Uh, and that is, first of all, John Heater is just so boring and, and plain in this. He, he just has the same emotion constantly until there's one scene where he kind of hits his breaking point. But throughout the whole thing, he's just very mopey and sad. And then all of a sudden this one scene, he erupts. And then the rest of the movie, he's, he's the same emotion, but just a little bit happier. Um, and there's this weird love interest between his sister and her friend just randomly come by and they're like, Hey, yeah, we're going to crash at your house. And they're and he's like, oh, uh, why? And they're just like, oh, just because. Stop being so weird about it. And he's like, okay. And then he it's like, develops. I like your friend. Yeah, exactly. And then he <laughs> falls in love with the friend, of course. Yeah. And they, there's really, there's just nothing between them, at all. There's, I, I'm just shocked. I'm looking was... at the stills of <laughs> the movie, and I'm just like looking at his faces, and yeah, it's he exactly has the same what you're face. talking about, and he's always, yeah. It's just like this the the girl gets so charmed by him. And it's like why? Like there's there's no there's no sparks right here between you guys. You guys are just saying things from the script that uh you know sound endearing to each other, but uh I I still I don't think John Heater was like hateable. I didn't hate him. I just thought he was like uh yeah, he's just he's okay, he's a sweet guy, he looks but like he's, he's just kind of like dull. a like a douchey version of his usual thing. Yeah. He he's just like I I don't really care, I don't really care about him in the bowling alley surviving in a way, <laughs> but uh, and then the the last like bad thing about it I'll say is that he he works so hard to put together this big like, um you know extravaganza thing at the bowling alley one day to try and save it you know he he starts calling everybody in the town, um, he's trying to market the hell out of it and then um, yeah all of a sudden people decide you know what i will go to that bowling alley that i don't give a shit about and then all of a sudden it, there's these just on the day of the the big event at the bowling alley which i don't even remember why it was like a special day maybe it was like a discount but uh it's just this like montage of john heater just like smiling and looking around and then and then these random extras in this movie just like bowling and just like smiling and it's all slow motion and it just felt so weird like i felt like i was watching stock videos of of people bowling it just yeah it, it just felt weird uh and that's where it really like s- it set in that okay this is a very like independent movie that somehow just got picked up on hulu but uh, uh i will say it was shot really creatively and uniquely like they they put a lot of time <laughs> it's like what i said that. about that one movie last week uh Oh, what was that thing? Uh, literally right before air of that movie. I <laughs> yeah. said that at like the end of, I was like, that, it was really well shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same with this. After it, all I the think weird stuff. It was like a very uh, basic plot and everything, but it, they definitely put a lot of thought into shooting it. And in the beginning, there's a lot of these montages of John Heater just like, you know, spraying the shoes, preparing the bowling alley for, you know, the day and th- that was like really satisfying to watch like i was like oh this is nice this is like a nice pleasant thing to watch <laughs> um but then once you know john heater starts opening his mouth then it's like yeah like uh, i just don't care um you know it, yeah. this m- very much sounds 
like a movie that you'd watch on Hulu. Yeah. Like I <laughs> yeah. find lots of yeah weird stuff on Hulu. They they definitely have like they pick up some weird movies that probably wouldn't get any uh much of a distribution. Uh yeah, just like Netflix does too. But yeah. Uh it, it's definitely one of those. Um but yeah, I mean there there are some unique elements to it too. Like there's there okay, I should say there are these dream sequences that John Heater has that are kind of cool. I just they just don't really mean anything because they don't really they don't fit with the story to me. I, I I felt like they were kind of there were these like surreal yeah yeah, yeah. like almost David Lynch like dream sequences yeah. where he's like it's or like even the indie like, director trying to be artsy and obscure exactly. for a moment. Yeah. And much like uh, Big Lebowski too, when he's you know just floating across the uh the bowling alley and crashing into the pins um so i i liked those for the like, the style aspects and the weirdness of it but i just felt like it was from a different movie mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I i wouldn't recommend watching it because it does feel kind of dull and uh and it's 90 minutes but it feels a little bit long so i wouldn't recommend it but i would i would say it, it does look cool <laughs> and it is shot well <laughs> All right. Yeah. When Jeff tried to save the world. You know what? Why don't you just do your other one since it's connected? Okay. Yeah. I'll do it's my other one. Weird as well and uh, mediocre. Yes. This one I w- is even weirder. Um, and uh, it's another one I strictly watched because uh, the poster looked kind of funny. And I love the cast. Um, but it was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> it would not not terrible, but uh, yeah, I, I also wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, it's an evening with Beverly Lufflin, um, which is a really hard title to remember. But <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, this is a movie on Netflix. This is a 2018 movie. Um, I I had never heard anything about this up until a week ago when I saw it pop up on Netflix, and I was like, oh. This has Aubrey Plaza, Jermaine Clement, Craig Robinson, Maria Bamford, Emile Hirsch in it. Like, it's got to be somewhat interesting. Um, and it was. It was. I, yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't have said it was, like, just god-awful in the beginning like I did. but Because uh, I don't think it was completely terrible. But um, there's just not really not really much there to, to take away. It's. Uh, I'll, I'll read the plot here. It's, it's a really weird movie. But... Lulu Danger's unsatisfying marriage takes a turn for the worse when a mysterious man from her past comes to town to perform an event called An Evening with Beverly Lufflin for one magical night only. So there's this whole, like, I don't know how the plot gets started is, uh, you know, Aubrey Plaza's in this terrible marriage with Emile Hirsch. And then she finds out, or he finds out from her that um, Aubrey Plaza's brother um, has like a ton of money that you know saved up uh, at w- in his store that he owns. He owns like a convenience store, and so Emil Hirsch gets his friends together to go, um, you know, steal from her brother, who her brother then recognizes him because it's his brother-in-law, and he's just got like a small like mask over his face. Uh, and uh, Jermaine Clement happens to be to be there, and he like stops. He tries to stop him. Um, but then he agrees to like help the brother get the money back and then all this this weird crazy shit happens i feel i felt like they didn't know how to quite get all these characters to meet up in one place which was their goal so they had all these crazy weird things happen in order to get them to all come together because then aubrey plaza comes back into it and then ends up stealing the money with jermaine clement and they go off on their own little thing while being chased by the other guys and then they end up at this hotel that's very quirky, and um, Craig Robinson is there with his manager. And he's like this, you know, this weird, strange musician, and he doesn't talk at all throughout the whole thing. What? But Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza and Craig Robinson are, like, shocked to see each other. So clearly you can see there's something in the past between them because they're, like, shocked. Um, and Craig Robinson, all he does the whole movie up until the last like 20 minutes is, mm, mm. like he, he makes those noises Man. and 
and it's weird because it's that like sucks. it's craig robinson he's a, a huge part of this movie yet he doesn't have any speaking lines until yeah, like an hour and a half ridiculous in. it it didn't make any sense um and it, I, I know i realize like the reason is to um you know keep leading up to the mystery of his character because um you know you find out more about him later on but uh yeah, it just kind of an, it ends up being this love triangle between Jemaine Clement, Aubrey Plaza, and Craig Robinson for no real reason. Um, but then you find out about the history between Aubrey Plaza and Craig Robinson. And, uh, and, and at that point, you just don't really care anymore. Um, and the only reason I would say it's not completely terrible, it's still like mediocre, is because there are a lot of weird, um, weird, funny things that happen in it there's a lot of humor that just goes nowhere and completely misses the mark. Um, but I think just with how strong the cast is that they, that they make some of the moments just slightly better than they would have been with, uh, you know, with shittier actors. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's I, the case a lot I've noticed. Yeah. So I, I do think it, it really benefits from having the cast that it does. Cause even Emil Hirsch, I think is really funny. Uh, at times too but uh yeah it's just it's it's just kind of a pointless movie and uh um yeah there it it definitely went along with the lines of this big mystery while also being this just um you know crazy out of nowhere comedy movie um but it just kind of doesn't doesn't really uh hit the mark on either of those notes um so yeah it's it's mediocre i would say not completely terrible there were funny parts but just mediocre i have a lot of um weird aubrey plaza movies on my watch list (laughs) she's been in some weird ones just like a bunch yeah on netflix like life after beth that movie's on my watch list oh yeah yeah still haven't watched it that's been on my watch list too yeah. yeah i think the little hours is yep, his that one that I've well. been trying to watch too. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely been in some weird indie comedies. Um, oh, yeah. I did one. like Ingrid Goes West. Yeah, I like that which, one a lot. Um, That's a good movie. From a few years ago. But yeah, I yeah. think the indie comedy world definitely like goes for Aubrey Plaza pretty hard. Yes. Yeah. Because she's, I mean, she is just kind of just a weird, not normal type of person. And, uh, and she's also but she's also like a comedic actor a strong comedic actor so uh yeah i think it makes sense have you ever seen when her and i think it's her boyfriend or husband who's also in film they did their criterion closet picks i have not have seen, seen the aubrey plaza criterion closet <laughs> picks no <laughs> it is it is so weird because they are so like quiet and dry <laughs> that it's like oh my god can you i i can't imagine being a fly on the wall when they like have dinner together or something or they're just like sitting watching a movie I know. together do, do like do they ever say anything <laughs> not sarcastic as fuck <laughs> yeah the whole time it's like i can't tell if they're it, are, are, are you making a joke or is are you anything just really real ever lowered? or is everything yeah. just like a like an annoyed sarcastic <laughs> yeah. vibe and i almost like felt like you know they were just like lifeless in a way that you would need to check their pulse yeah she's make like sure they were still breathing and everything yeah she's like kurosawa it's pretty good yeah oh so i first watched this movie in college and it yeah it's a kurosawa movie and it's really thought-provoking and uh yeah and they're like are you making a joke now or do, yeah, or do yeah, you really you feel mean like that? they're building yeah. towards something but yeah no yeah it's, yeah because uh, so it's many a weird people one. when they're in the closet are very enthusiastic so it's funny that yeah <laughs> out of everyone aubrey plaza just has a very dry closet picks one yeah i, I definitely am more of a fan of the enthusiastic ones but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's still it's still funny to watch and the youtube comments yeah about no i want to watch too. that sounds otherworldly kind of yeah thing. oh yeah it's uh it's something else um yeah okay well, that's it. Yeah, that's an evening with Beverly Loughlin, the movie that nobody's ever going to remember the title of. I'm going to yeah, it too, I'm not so. going to remember that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it sounds like something I would watch. Yeah, I could I could see you watching it as just a, you know, a random watch, like literally, right before Aaron. 
because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I watched that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. I, I I should not be putting down any watches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, <laughs> as they say. So my last two are a are a duo because they are both Cohen Brothers uh, westerns. Oh, I know what you're gonna t- I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. So the first one. Is the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, uh, and the second one is uh, True Grit. All right, which happens to be on your westerns list. It is. It is on the top twenty. Yeah, and so the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, I'll do first. I've been wanting to watch that. That we're talking. We're talking about a Netflix list that has been on my Netflix list <laughs> for a while. Yeah, it took me for a while to get to it, but I finally did, and. Uh, I think I feel similarly to other people like I maybe uh, a little underwhelmed because it's a Coen Brothers movie, but still definitely think it's strong and like it overall. And um, Mm -hmm. I think I definitely felt it was uh, uneven a little bit because it Mm -hmm. is like a it is a series of short stories. So I think you're going to have your. uh you're going to think subjectively about each one uh, as they go by. Uh, kind of a little like Akira, Kurosawa's Dreams a little bit mm-hmm. and just movies like that. Um, but yeah, overall, I really liked it. I, I, I There were um, some, st- like I, you know, there's some quarrels I had. Like I thought the Tim Blake Nelson opening was just, a, felt like a very typical modern Western thing to do. Um and I wish the James Franco uh, uh, story was a little longer. It just felt mm-hmm. like it was a gag and wasn't explored much at all. And it was almost like, all right, why even have this in here? Yeah. The thing is, the thing I was uh, worried about, which ended up being true. Um, so I will say I really liked the Ballad of Buster Scruggs too, but underwhelmed is sort of the perfect way to describe it because it didn't feel like you know you're supposed to feel after watching a coen brothers movie you know yeah uh, I th- it almost felt like they were like having fun making it they're like we'll just yeah right make a movie for fun yeah this is for us yeah uh and i was immediately like a little bit turned off when i heard that it was um uh a movie like this you know it wasn't just a uh you know two-hour narrative film uh, that it was, you know, like six stories in one. Um, cause I'm not always on, on board for that in a way, but you know, I figure it's the Coen brothers. So I, my main worry was that there would be, you know, some that I really liked and some that I didn't really care for. Um, which was, which was true. Yeah. There's definitely, I thought, I also thought the James Franco one was just sort of like, all of it, it was over like it was very quick it started and then it was over mm-hmm. there wasn't really much much to it but uh but i, I still like i liked it you know yeah I, w- I was into it but yeah it just it leaves you a little uh less than satisfied um but i also uh i also there were some of the a couple of the stories where i was like oh i wish i could see like a full uh you know 90 minute 90 to 120 minute feature length movie of this type of story or something related to this too yeah like the second to last one uh with the people migrating uh yes if that's the right that word. one yeah. yeah 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 um yeah and the there's the one there was the one main guy um who's like you know saves the pregnant woman is that it yep i can't remember all of it. Yep. yeah okay yep and and the 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 uh the native americans kind of flock at them like back and forth it feels kind of like otherworldly uh yeah mm-hmm. i i i thought there was great uh great tension in that one and um yeah and some really cool sequences yeah i like that one a lot uh i also liked the uh the liam neeson one with the uh performer who yeah had, you know, yeah no that limbs. one felt like it went by so fast for me too but mm-hmm I did I like that, that one. That, that ending, very much felt like a short film. Yes, definitely. That, that ending felt like uh, I felt that like that one was complete uh, for sure, mm-hmm. and the ending really like hit me like a ton of bricks. 
um because it, it's it's slightly ambiguous but um also kind of tells you what uh what just happened and it's fairly dark um but uh yeah and i and i i enjoyed the uh the beginning with tim blake nelson um i don't know no, being yeah, as it, that wacky but it is it is very character. enjoyable mm-hmm. i just i just felt it was um i just felt it was very typical of a thing to happen yeah like a very yeah, typical sure. character yeah and i and i wonder if they went with that because it was you know they'd started off with something more familiar and uh goofy um you know rather than going with something completely dark yeah uh, you know, or they just they just with. like tim blake a lot and want to see him in that sort of role yeah which yeah i mean that's probably fair. part of it too mm-hmm. um i i have to say my favorite segment was the tom waits one in the, the gold middle. prospector one was i think great. that was my yeah. favorite one for sure Hmm. yeah that one is also just gorgeous too yeah, just where they chose to shoot it, like that valley area, was super mm-hmm. cool. Yep. And then, uh, what were the other, what were the other ones? There was I, I think one we, where they're like in a stagecoach too, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the last one. I can't remember what happens in that one, but Me I don't neither. remember liking it that much. It was like a rough one to end it on. Yeah, I felt that one. I felt like um, that they almost didn't know what to do with or. It was it was supposed to be more profound than it was. I can't I can't remember too much, but I remember the ending was like, eh, yeah, okay, uh, yeah. I think that might have been my least favorite um, out of all of them. But yeah, I still I still really liked the the complete movie. Yeah. Um, together, but yeah, not one of not one of the best Coen Brothers movies. No, no, but um, I did watch True Grit as well oh yeah and i will say that i was blown away by that one really Um, that's awesome yeah yeah i i haven't watched a lot of modern westerns but i must say that this has to be uh one of the finest uh straight westerns like of the past couple decades um absolutely yeah yeah it has to be it was just i just thought it was so so great um not only does like Roger Deakins shoot it like incredibly like throughout, um, but the cast from top to bottom is amazing. Like Hay- Haley yeah. Steinfeld was blowing me away in every scene, and mm-hmm. I think I mean like, I think this is the best I've seen Jeff Bridges. Um, I thought he was so great, and then you got Matt Damon and Josh Brolin to back them up. It was just yeah, it was awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I enjoy. I enjoyed. I enjoyed every second of it. Great, just great, great story. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very powerful stuff, and yeah, very fun characters, and had a lot of great Western like like tropes and traditions in it that it kind of brought. Um, it kind of brought to a modern uh, in a modern light and. Uh, just yeah i thought it all worked very well Mm -hmm. yeah i i I think this is perfectly cast like josh brolin is amazing at being this like uh grungy dirty just evil uh you know outlaw type guy yeah that is so hateable uh and Haley, yeah Haley steinfeld and roost and uh, well rooster cogburn are uh Jeff Bridges are just like so great together too with their dynamic of, you know, she's just this like strong, uh, you know, doesn't take shit from everyone, mm-hmm. young girl. And, yeah. she, you know, she's not even taking shit from Jeff Bridges. Who's, uh, you know, he's seen it all. He, he could not care less about like other people. And, uh, uh, and yeah, I, I, I've seen both this and the original true grit with John Wayne. And I, this one I just love so much more because mm. of the cast too. I just feel like there's so much more you can get behind with, uh, you know, not just how it looks, but uh, just I just prefer Jeff Bridges over over John Wayne too because yeah. there's just more of a personality there. Yeah. Uh, well, too. and like I said, it's it's one of his best roles. Like it's such a fine mm-hmm. piece of acting. He's so likable, and his voice his voice <laughs> is so great and 
um he's so funny in it like Mm -hmm. whenever matt damon like shows up and like jeff bridges (laughs) like it's la beef (laughs) i just like (laughs) died of laughter yeah yeah and and it's it's really dark at times too um yeah it's yeah it's such an easy story like get behind and uh yeah i gotta think it's gotta be one of the best looking westerns ever too like oh for sure yeah yeah Yeah, it's one i uh i'm like almost embarrassed i'm like embarrassed to say that i just saw it that's for sure (laughs) i definitely feel like it was big at the time it came out uh you know i remember i mean i remember my family like we all saw it and then like got is one of those we got on dvd like right after it came out too (laughs) you guys Um, saw it together and then yeah bought it as a family on dvd yeah it's like oh we got to get this and watch it again yeah like one of those uh movies from like back when you're when you're a kid and uh you know the whole family can get behind totally the the same movie yeah it's uh yeah it's making me want to rewatch it now too because i've yeah i've really loved this movie for a while yeah Uh, totally saw why it was uh on your list Mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's weird to think of like the coens doing a a remake of a already you know pretty well-known movie yeah from back in the day but they did it so well but then they do and you're like oh yeah that's why they did it because they were gonna like make this (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) yeah there's a reason that's why yeah it's not this isn't just a cash grab this is like a genuinely great movie yeah, yeah, I'm excited that you uh, that you watched it. Yeah, nice. Me too. And that's uh, that's that would be it for me and uh, and you as well. Yeah, right? that's our uh, our movie viewing experience from uh, the past week. Yeah, not, <laughs> it's a solid yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, not quite as epic as our no, huge June, but uh, yeah, I still feel we got we got some. Uh, yeah some good ones in although i i said in the beginning I yeah you were being a little modest week. maybe at the beginning like, i yeah. think i had a bad week <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a bad place right now <laughs> i just watched an evening with beverly Laughlin. yeah <laughs> true uh, but yeah I, you know i will say when i was watching those and thinking like man i haven't watched like a great movie this week but i i was thinking these are still movies that i want to talk about so yeah and i and i did so yeah, it wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it, I regret nothing. Yeah, now this episode's going to end on a freeze frame of me pumping my fist in the air. Yeah. <laughs>